watch, but my heart's not there. Probably say I'm selfish and I know it's not fair. Wanna give you love, but ain't the right time, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I care about you, but my heart's not there. Probably say I'm selfish and I know it's not fair. Wanna give you Welcome back to Simone Talks. I am back with another video. Um, I realized that in my vlog for my one year anniversary of my brand, brand ugh, of my brand and my YouTube channel, I said I was gonna have a sit down conversation about what made me start it, start Simone Talks and what Simone Talks stand for. And I never did that. Like I got lazy. I'm not gonna lie. Um, I know y'all get tired of seeing me sit down in this area and just he -he 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 -he, run off at the mouth. So I wanted to honor that and talk about why I started my brand and what made me start my brand. It's actually a crazy story. Um, I did go live on my Facebook. So if you have me as a Facebook friend, I did go live on my Facebook the day of my anniversary, which was February the 27th of 2019. So you can view that on there. Um, but what truly made me start my brand is that um, I hated my job. I hated my job. I hated every other job I had. I hated work, working for other people. I really did. Like, it sucked having somebody tell you what you can and can't do, telling you when and where to come into work, talk to you any type of way, treat you any type of way. And then I worked in customer service for my last two jobs. So sitting there listening to customers complain and be disrespectful, it's just like, baby boy, <laughs> baby girl, I will hang up in your face. But you couldn't do that. So I was like, I'm sick of this shit. So, I was like, I was praying. I was like, Lord, what can I do? Like, I'm sick of this job. I want to make my, I want to work for myself. You know, I'm sick of this. And I, I had the idea of going back to school in my mind. But it was like, ugh, I don't want to go back to school. And then, because I moved from Tallahassee, I was going to school there. And I moved here in a rush. I didn't do the things I should have done so that. If I did want to go to school here, the process would be easy. So I had to like pay some stuff off and do all of this extra stuff to get into school and actually take classes. And then I was like, oh, I don't want to do that. But I end up doing that. I end up talking to the people I need to talk to, take care of the things I need to take care of so I can go back to school. Because that allowed me to quit my job along with saving my money, saving and investing my money in things that created me a form of residual income. To where I don't have to work all the time. And when I do work, it's not a necessity. It's like, I work if I want to. So, I started my brand. And I was literally, I was in a relationship with a person. And things wasn't going very well. So, I was just chilling. Like, I was actually crying. Because I'm like, why? Why aren't things going well? Like, I really love this person. Like, I didn't get, I didn't get why things wasn't going well. Like, I was just so confused. And then I was just talking to God, and it was just like, Simone, like, what are you doing? Like, why, why are you sitting here crying? Like, come on, you could be doing something more productive. Like, get up and do something. So that night, I was like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to start my YouTube channel. This is going to be starting my brand. Like, why not? And I did my introduction video, and... It was fun. Like, I actually enjoyed it. It was, like, editing. I don't like editing, but it's growing on me. But, like, that was so, like, it was thrilling. So, I was like, you know, I can actually do this. You know, I might be able to do this. So, I started my YouTube channel. And that created a whole brand. Like, just because I posted that one video and I continued to post videos, you know, I got off track here and there. But that created my brand which created other things that I started to dabble in like like I always say I have a podcast I have a blog like once I created that YouTube channel and started Simone Talks that created other outlets for me to talk about what I go through what I feel the different things in my life the different challenges I experience and I love it like for me talking and writing that that's how that's that's how I get through my stuff, especially writing. Like, I write everything. I write down everything. Like, I've had a journal since I was in elementary school. I write it down, write it down, write it down. Like, if somebody pissed me off, if I'm mad about something, I write it down, write it down, write it down. Like, that's how I get over stuff. I either write it down or I talk about it. I might not publish it, but 
I'll woosah and let it out. Because a lot of times when we hold stuff in, like when we just sit there and we just let this just sit in our chest, like that's not good. That, that's not good for you mentally or physically. Like that's not good for your health. So I was like, I'm going to do this. And then I did it and my video was great. And then as time progressed, I started doing more videos, posting more blogs, posting more podcasts, and just talking from experiences. And it just grew and it's still growing. And this is the best. The best thing I ever did was quit my job and start my brand because it's what I want to do. It's not what my mama want me to do. My sister want me to do. My daddy want me to do. My best friend want me to do. It's what God placed in my heart to do. And it's what I'm going to do. It's what I'm going to work towards. A lot of times, you know, we get weary, weary, weary. And we get lost and it's like, oh, I don't know if I should do this. But it's like only because we get distracted. Like distractions come and just knock you off. But you can't let those distractions stop you. You got to keep going. And that's that's how my brain came about. It was one lonely, sad night. And I was like, you know, I'm not going to cry over you. What, Mary J. Blatch? I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to shed no tears. That's what happened. No, I'm going to do this. And I did it. I did it in my bathroom. I literally recorded my video in the bathroom. Because that was the only place with good lighting. Really sucks. But um, I do want to say, like, if you have anything you want to do, like, if you have any dreams or any goals that you want to achieve, just do it. Like, don't let naysayers tell you, oh, you can't do that. That's oversaturated. Too many people are doing that. You have to be different for that. Don't listen to none of that. If you have it in your heart and if you have a plan to execute it, do it. Because a lot of times we get complacent and we're like, oh, I can't do that because so-and-so said this and that. Because everybody has these opinions. But this is your life. Live your life for you. You only get one. And trust me, they're living their life doing what they want to do, being happy, and whatever they're doing. So live your life for you. Do what you want to do and make the best of it. Life's too short to be like, oh, I wanted to do this. And then you die and it's like, dang, I didn't get to do that. I'm going to do everything I want to do. Everything in my my brain up here. All of it. I don't care what nobody say. I'll release a whole website. I'll, I'll start all types of stuff. I don't care what nobody say. If I'm going to if I get up here, I'm going to do it and execute it very well. But I just wanted to give a background on what made me start it. I did not talk about what Simone Talks stands for. And I get this question a lot. A lot of people are like, what is Simone Talks? Like, what do you do? Simone Talks is a brand. It is my brand. It is my baby. Like, this is my baby. Like, I birthed this myself. Like, this is beautiful. But it's an open platform for me to be me and to talk about things that a lot of people don't like to talk about. Like, Nobody likes to talk about relationships. Nobody likes to talk about colorism, depression, mental health. That is the hardest topic to talk about, especially in the black community. We don't talk about depression at all. We don't seek counseling at all. And we feel like it makes us weak to talk about it, but it doesn't make you weak. It makes you stronger because I didn't really start healing from all the stuff I went through until i started talking and writing about it like i i thought i healed from it because i put it in the back of my mind i was like oh i'm good on that if i don't think about it then you know i'm not gonna feel it but once i start releasing that stuff into the world and just talking about it and being truthful about my experience that that like lifted the weight off my shoulders so just like it's just open for me to be me like like we live in this box and we don't like to address things because of how people are going to take it but certain stuff just have it has to be addressed it has to be talked about especially among us women and in, in the black community we have to address these things we have to talk about these things had i been able to talk about and be open about a lot of things i went through i would have healed from this stuff a long time ago but because we get in this mindset as people that if we talk about it, it's, we're weak. If we dwell on it, we're not over it. I had a lot of people say, you always talking about this, this, and that. Are you really over it? Yes, I'm over it. But just because I'm over it doesn't mean I'm not going to be an advocate for it. 
because you don't know who else is going through what I went through. You don't know who else is battling with what I battled with. I will talk about it until the day I die because that is something that everyone goes through. Colorism is something that a lot of dark-skinned women and men go through. Depression and mental health. That's a lot of people go through that and don't talk about it. So the number one cause of suicide that a lot of people don't know because I, you know, I, I look up my stuff. I do my statistics. It is depression. A lot of people kill themselves because they're depressed. They feel like they don't have anyone they can talk to and vent to. So the next best thing to them, oh, they don't, no one cares about me. I can't talk to anybody about this. So I'm going to end my life. When in reality, if we were a lot open to people talking about how they feel and not being okay, a lot more lives would be saved. A lot more people would be open and express how they feel and what they go through. That's why me, I'm going to talk about it, whether you like it or not. Like, my experience is my experience. Just like, your experience is your experience. And you should talk about that as well. Like, we all have our own testimony that's going to save other people. Just because we we have different struggles and different battles doesn't mean it's not going to help someone out. And the crazy part is, sometimes we go through the same thing in different ways. And the different ways that we go through these things can help somebody else. Because it's like, dang, I went through that. So how did you deal with that? And then you get a new perspective on these things by talking about it and being open with someone else and connecting. But yeah, that's it. I answered those two questions. I'm done talking. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe, and share. Follow me on social media. The link will be in the description box down below. And I will be dropping my merch. I am super excited about that. Merch coming next month. And I will put pictures in here on all of the merch i will be dropping for my brand and i will have unisex tees for men and women but y'all know my outro be confident be glamorous stay beautiful or handsome peace I'm selfish and I know it's not fair